Welcome to the Internet History Podcast. I'm your host, Brian McCullough. If you remember back to the chapter episode that I did dozens of episodes ago on the early search engines in Yahoo, I said that it's hard to pin down exactly what was the quote-unquote first search engine. And that's true. There were so many competing projects and technologies that launched in different ways at different times. But it's never really satisfying when you're unable to name a first for something, or at least I think so. So when I was writing the search engine chapter for the book, I started poking around again to see if I could maybe nail down a definitive first search engine or search tool on the web. And as I was doing so, I uncovered a very early search engine called the World Wide Web Worm, which is, to my mind, criminally undercovered by the histories out there, but which and again, this is in my opinion, could stake a very reasonable claim to being the first search engine. The World Wide Web Worm was developed by Oliver McBrien at the University of Colorado at Boulder in late 1993, and it actually grew out of an early directory site for web content that McBrien also launched, sort of a Yahoo before Yahoo. And so today, we're going to talk to Oliver McBrien, to remember the World Wide Web worm. Whether it was definitively the first search engine, I'm not ready to make a call on yet, but I'm eager to give this technology its due since it's so overlooked, and as you'll hear, in a roundabout way, the worm led to the goto.com search engine, which many of you know eventually gave Google its business model. So today, the earliest of web search with Oliver McBrien. Oliver McBrien, thanks for coming on the Internet History Podcast. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, just real briefly, I want to get into a little bit of your background. Um, I believe you uh, went to university um, at uh, National University of Ireland. You got a PhD at Harvard. Were you studying computer science that whole time? No, no, I was studying uh, theoretical physics, and uh, I've worked in theoretical physics for a long time. And uh, graduated into other areas like uh, fluid mechanics and uh, computational science. So I've worked in a range of areas. Are, do you teach um, physics today or computer science? Uh, no. I've, uh, uh, since uh, 1987, I've been on the faculty at the University of Colorado in computer science. So... Um... You did you have a lot of experience with the the pre web internet? Yeah, I definitely did. I mean, I was using the internet from seventy three onwards or something somewhere around that time, and um, not doing much more than email for much of that time. And but as we got into the eighties, I was doing a lot more uh, networking type stuff. Uh, the, um, sorry, go ahead. Uh, as the uh, as the web unfolded, or prior to the web, I mean, the, the web gets a tremendous amount of attention, but there were a couple of other applications that were around just before that, mm-hmm. that, that that were also important. But as soon as the web appeared in 93 uh, was when I became aware of it, uh, I got very interested. Do you remember, and, uh, do you remember um, your first time um, using the web, hearing about the web, I- anything like that? I first heard of, I was working with people at the um, um, at NCSA at the University of Illinois, uh, and Larry Smarr and uh, some of his colleagues, some of whom are very well known today. Right. Um, and that was when I first became aware of the web. They were developing um, an, an initial browser at the time, which eventually became Netscape. Right, Mosaic, which uh, turned into Netscape. Exactly. Um, so, so I was a 
Exactly. Early user of Mosaic, and that's where I developed uh, most of the, I, I was using Mosaic when I was doing most of my development. So tell me the story of how you got interested in the concept of, of search um, and search on the web. Was it, was it search on the web at first, or were you already interested in, in the idea of searching um, on, on the Internet generally? I think I, it actually started slightly differently. I was mo- most interested in cataloging the web. Mm-hmm. Um, now, obviously, search uh, is, is related to that. But at the beginning, I wanted to create a catalog of all the pages on the web. There, there had been an effort to do that at CERN where they created, um, I, I've forgotten what they called it now, but it was it was an index of all the web pages they knew about, but it was manually created. And basically, it came down to what they knew about. So I decided I'd like to try to create an automated version where people could actually add their own web pages. And so I created something called the Mother of All Bulletin Boards, mm. which became... Uh, extremely popular and grew quite quickly to have um, tens of thousands of web pages because anybody could just go there and and enter up their own information Is and it, was it hi- hierarchy based like you had different categories and people could yeah, put them it was all hierarchical and of course a person could in the course of entering a web page they could create a new hierarchy if they didn't see one that corresponded to what they wanted um, so it was, I believe, the first hierarchical um, database on the web that allowed people to to enter their own information, um, and it became quite deep. I mean, it was a big tree. And after a while, I realized that searching this could be an important issue, and that, uh, and then I realized that I could also add more pages by having a search engine that would locate pages around the place and so the two things became closely linked and when i developed the what the, the world wide web worm which was in the same time scale this we're talking about probably october and november of 93 mm-hmm. um the the page for the mother of all bulletin boards referenced the search engine and vice versa so um now, wh- one of the interesting things was uh, I had on there uh, in, in the hierarchical database, I, one of the things I had on was all of the movies that were online, all of the video. So it was, it was kind of a, the earliest version of, um, of YouTube. And right, right. There were literally thousands of, of movies uh, right at the beginning of the web that I had located um, that were now on the, uh, online. So let, let me, just for um, historical purposes, p- put this uh, in context. It's, it, you said it's fall of 93, and, and you're at the University of Colorado at Boulder at this point? Right. Okay. Correct. Um, so we te- let's get into a little bit of the details, the, the technical details about the worm. So you, you said you want an automated uh, process to add new pages, to index new pages, to discover new pages. Um, so do you create what we would now call, you know, a spider to go out in, into the into the web and, and find these new things? Yeah, I mean, it was no different than what's done today. It was just a spider that went out and you started it somewhere. You gave it a single web page to start with. Um, of course... I gave it the mother of all bulletin boards as its starting point because the mother of all bulletin boards already had a huge number of web pages stored in it and kept getting bigger. So it was a good starting point. And, and then it, it would uh, start from that point and explore all the different links that it already knew about. And then some of those would lead to new, to new locations and just kept expanding that way. And, and sorry, go ahead. But by the time it got to early '94, there was the first World Wide Web conference uh, at CERN in Geneva, and uh, at that point, they, they it, it was selected as the 
the top search engine on the web. Wait, right. You um, you spoke at that conference, right? And, and um, yeah. uh, demonstrated the, the, the worm. Exactly. Um, so, again, on the technical side, so what, uh, you know, uh, the early um, search technologies used you know, different sort of secret sauces in terms of, you know, what they, how they index things. Um, sure. What, what specifically did the worm do? Um, did it, was it just... Uh, text on the pages was it the metadata what what was it that you sent out to to index and give weight to uh, well uh, uh, since I was trying to locate web pages the earliest version of it focused on um, searching the metadata in in a uh, web page so it would find a web page it would locate all the metadata in it and then uh, search down into them and and in that way it Mm-hmm. It was exploring the the tree of web pages out there. Did you draw? Uh, now, did, sorry, did you draw uh, from from earlier search uh, things like Archie, Veronica, the, the, those those other uh, no. pre web search stuff? No, I didn't uh, do any of those. But but Archie, Archie is one of the things that I would point to. I mean, there were several other things out there prior to to the World Wide Web coming along that certainly had uh, had made advances in some of these directions. But no, I didn't use anything like that. I just started from scratch. Mm-hmm. And um, the, as you said, there were two parts to the, to the worm. One was the uh, spider that was out finding all this stuff. And then there was the indexer that took all that stuff and turned it into a database that could be searched. And the earliest version of the worm had a pretty powerful search capability it allowed you to um, use a regular expression uh, for your search. So you could really nail down very, very detailed searches in, in, within the, whatever was in the database. But as time went by, the, the cost of doing these um, regular expression searches got more and more expensive. So at that point, I, because I was just running this on a university computer, um, a, as time went by, I was consuming a large fraction of the university facilities. <laughs> what, did, what did they have to say about that? Well, I got a lot of pressure <laughs> to reduce the amount of, of uh, activity on there. The whole world was using it. I mean, it was at that time the top search engine, so people from all over were accessing it. And computer resources were fairly limited at, at that time. So uh, I had to make it more efficient than... So I dropped the regular expression searches and went to simpler searches and indexed things to be uh, binary searchable, um, which improved things a lot. Can you please correct? And then the other the other thing I would uh, would say mm-hmm. was the results of the searches uh, looked extremely like Google even today, and most of the other search engines that came out subsequent to that uh, were much more complicated. There was a simplicity to the searches, and I think that's been part of the success of Google. I mean, the back algorithm of Google is a separate issue, but in terms of what you actually see when you do a Google search, it's a very simple the, format. The, the user experience. Speaking speaking of Google, um, correct me if I'm wrong about this, but I, I read somewhere that y- y- your... The, the worm also looked at the actual content of the hyperlinks themselves. Is that right? Yeah, it also looked uh, later. It, it also indexed the text in the, in the uh, hyperlinks. So right. Right, that's similar to what, you know, uh, on a base level, uh, you know, was, was Google's uh, innovation right. as well. Um, so I, so you, you create this in the fall of 93, um, uh, is it released in 94? Like, when, when would um, the general public be able to, to use it? I think it was, uh, I think it was running in, in November of 93 um, and became, I mean, it, it was a question of it uh, being available to people. You, people take a while to learn that something is out there. So by early in 94, a lot of people had located it. You know, you you had to actually get onto somebody else's web pages to be mm-hmm. known about. It, it, you might have a great uh, 
a place like the mother of all bulletin boards to announce things, but if people don't know where that is, <laughs> they're not going to find it. But as soon as somebody found the mother of all bulletin boards, then they would find my search engine because I had it um, right on there at the top. Um, I Some people <laughs> have, have credited uh, the worm as being perhaps the first you know, widely available web search engine. Um, what What is your opinion on that in terms of the timeline? Do you feel like you were at least uh, close to being first or, or where where do you think you fall into the historical timeline of that? No, I think it's, I think that's true. There was a paper written by uh, several people. I, I'd have to look up uh, who they were. One of them was uh, one of the top guys at Yahoo. Um, it was a research paper uh, looking at the history of, of the web um of web search and they yeah they indicated that they, they believed it was uh the first um uh operational search engine that, w- uh, that was publicly available there was another one uh which had had restrictions it was just it was it searched only within a university um background i can't remember exactly which one that was right well I, I i could dig out that paper and email it to you and sure yeah uh, that's that's better than me trying to make a claim <laughs> about it well <laughs> um there were uh, the, the reason this is all confusing for people like me that are trying to piece it all together is then in 94 there's a whole scrum of you know yeah. various uh search and indexing sites yahoo um architects becomes excite um, uh, was were, were there any opportunities for the worm to become a, a commercial uh, site like, say, Excite eventually did? Yeah, I mean, there, there definitely were, but uh, I was, unfortunately, to some extent, I didn't have the right set of contacts. I mean, what should have been done was the whole concept should have been patented at the time. If I'd been at a place like Stanford, undoubtedly that might have happened. But, um, you know, the university here uh, didn't have a major um, department that dealt with that kind of thing, except for biotech, because they were, they were very effective in biotech. Of course, nowadays they do, but at the time, the software wasn't really a major thrust. So I didn't re- really think about it even. I didn't even think. To me, this was just a research project. But yeah, I could have I could have done something with it that mm-hmm. would have been commercialized at that time. At a later point, I did uh, work with, um, and now we're talking about '97. Mm-hmm. Um, I I did transfer it to um, a company that was set up to house it called GoTo.com. Right. It then became the GoTo search engine, which later evolved into. Uh, Yahoo's search engine, right, um, and, and and pioneered the the search based advertising that, right, of course Google uses today. Yeah, so so that but that was a later phase, and uh, to me was actually less interesting than mm-hmm. creating the initial prototype. So go to go to licensed um, the worm technology or um, yeah. well, they actually bought it. They bought it. Okay, um, and. Sorry, go ahead. Well, it became a, a later point. It, the name was Overture. It right. changed from GoTo.com into Overture. Right, right, right. Um, so you um, you've uh, you've remained an academic to this day. You're still um, you're still teaching computer science and and uh, at the University of Colorado. Well, at this point, I'm emeritus faculty uh-huh. member. Uh-huh. And, but, yeah, I'm still on the faculty uh, and. I still I still do computing science work, and I've been involved in a number of patent suits um, that specifically use the fact that the uh, both the World Wide Web worm and the um, mother of all bulletin boards was there before Yahoo and some of mm-hmm. the other two, mm-hmm. and it, it became a critical issue that these things were there in '93, mm-hmm. and. Uh, if they're there a year before something else, so we won some real, really big cases based on that. How so long, that, that was pleasing. 
that was really pleasing because to me it was a research project and I it was kind of annoying to find that somebody was suing somebody else based on work that was done later. Right, right. Um, yeah. Well, actually, that'll be my last question in a second. But first of all, um, how long did the World Wide Web worm run? Like, when, when was the last point that I would have been able to, to use it? You know, that's a good question. Because the, the university server just bogged down more and more. And at a certain point, uh, I, I shut it off. And <laughs> somebody in Turkey actually made a copy of the whole worm and it was running over there wow. um, for many years later <laughs> it was really strange because it acquired all these Turkish pages in there um, oh yeah so there were several different things that happened like that but the one other thing about the worm was that it was a it, it did, you could make um, duplicates of it and run it someplace else so some organizations had it running internally just to uh, index their own web pages internally. So, for all I know, some of them had it running much longer. But I, I moved on and was working on other things mm -hmm. by this point. Well, um, as my final question, um, it's sort of related to what you've already said, but I've, I've asked several other people, because so much of the search technology came out of academia and, and, and started as academic problems to solve. Um, right. So how do you feel about the fact that there's, it, it created a whole industry, a multi-billion dollar industry, for something that seemed like it was just an, an academic exercise? Oh, I, I think it's great. I mean, let, let me give you another example of something I did in 93. Uh, okay. Uh, the, the university uh, had a thermometer uh, on the engineering building, and, and I, got, I got that online so that you could look up and see what the temperature was at any moment from a web page. And I don't think there was an example of something like that before. And um, look where that's gone now. Right, the Internet so, of Things, yes. I mean, it's Internet of Things. So it's it just was great fun to be part of the beginning of this whole thing. And um, I think where it's gone is fantastic. I, I do hope, and I, I think it's true, that those companies that are now making billions of dollars will feed some of it back into the uh, university uh, environments through grants or, um, or, or other mechanisms. Payback. Because they, they have benefited enormously. Payback on the research, yes. It's payback on the National Science Foundation research. That's the bottom line. Yeah. And a couple of other, you know, Department of Energy research and uh, DARPA. Uh, well. That, that needs to be appreciated. I agree. Um, Oliver McBrien, thank you so much um, for coming on the podcast and um, remembering all that early history for us. Okay, it was a pleasure. If this is the first time you're listening to this podcast, please subscribe to us on your podcast app of choice. There's plenty more great internet history where that came from. And if you're a longtime listener, then you know what to do to help us out. Rate and review us on iTunes because iTunes gives credit to reviews and ratings, and the more great reviews we get, the more people will discover us. As always, there's more info on our website, www.internethistorypodcast.com. The show's Twitter handle is at nethistorypod, and my personal Twitter is at brianmcc. Thanks for listening.